Okay, next up, we have got, um, oh, and as always, keep putting the questions in the chat. It's great to see those all coming through. So we'll do our best to get to all of those uh, in a short break. So next we have Sam from Transport for London. Over to you, Sam. Uh, I'll um, largely, I think, be reiterating what Tim and Rob have said. So um, I'm head of corporate environment for Transport for London. I've been working in um, transport and land use planning uh, and environmental management for about the last 20 years. The uh, first part of that was in boroughs. Um, for the last seven years or so I've been at Transport for London um, where to begin with I was doing London-wide uh, policy so helping to write the Mayor's Transport Strategy and the London Environment Strategy as well as leading on all sorts of um, environmental policy and uh, leading on some big London-wide projects such as the Ultra Low Emission Zone. Uh, more recently, I've got this role, um, which is about our environmental performance as an organisation. So how can we meet our environmental ambitions? How can we ensure that we are compliant with um, all the various regulations in terms of the way we uh, maintain, deliver and operate our services, but also how we can achieve our ambitions for decarbonisation, for adapting to climate change, for doing our part in cleaning up the air, for helping to green the city, etc. So it's, a, it's an incredibly exciting role. And, and, you know, what I would say is it's a difficult time, as you can imagine, for everyone, uh, but also for Transport for London, particularly with the challenges around funding. But environment is the one thing that is genuinely keeping people going at TfL, uh, that there's a positivity about trying to build back better and have a, a green and just recovery. I'm also very pleased to be part of this Citizen Assembly. I think it's incredibly important that you have as much uh, uh, widespread participation and, and democracy as possible. So uh, fantastic that everyone's doing this. Um, <clears throat> so I, I think what I'll, what I'll say is, um, uh, because a lot of the points have been covered, the way I like to uh, present this is, first of all, imagine the future that you want, because I think most people can agree what kind of city they want to live in. They want to live in a city which has low traffic, that has local community activity that's green, that's quiet, that's calm, where you know local people, where there's a local economy, because that creates um, all the benefits that uh, Tim talked about in terms of health, clean air, uh, but also well-being, resilient, as in communities can support each other, but also resilient to extreme weather and shocks, uh, for example. Um, and the other thing I'd say, which has been touched on, is uh, you have to think about land use planning and transport at the same time. They're intrinsically linked and you've got to get your land use planning right because largely people don't travel around for the sake of it, they travel around for a reason. And so you want to have uh, mixed use, which I've already talked about. You want to have uh, things that are on people's doorstop that, you know, that they want to do and they want to spend time in their local area as much as possible. And you need to uh, put public transport, walking and cycling first wherever you can, you've got to make it attractive, uh, safe, affordable, uh, feel controlled, feel integrated. So people want to take that choice first. Um, and then whatever's left, you've got to electrify it. You've then got to, you know, as in remove fossil fuels. Uh, that electricity has to be uh, sourced from renewables. Um, but you also have to think about the whole life impacts of the stuff that you're delivering. It's not just about the emissions that come out of the um, energy stations or the tailpipes. It's all of the uh, CO2 emissions associated with what you build in the concrete. So, and that's an area where we definitely need to get uh, uh, better. And I think Tim kind of uh, touched on this and others. Uh, it, you have to do everything. You've got to have an integrated approach where you're getting your policy right, you're doing innovation. That's not just new technology. That's innovation in terms of taking holistic pro approach, selling the benefits, taking people with you. You have to have partnerships. You have to have innovative approaches to financing because uh, funding is not um, uh, unlimited. Um, uh, and so it's about taking a place-based approach. There isn't one solution for every area, but the more you can think about what does this area need to look like, where do we ultimately want to be and what's the most cost-effective way to do that? So we're not constantly ripping up the road to put in new uh, power provision, for example, as you electrify uh, buildings and, and, the, and the transport. Um, but as I say, it's so important to promote the benefits of what you're trying to achieve because that transition is painful, it's inevitable. You know, you're you're you've got a starting point, you've got a historic uh, city or borough or whatever, 
uh, and it is, there's going to be disruption in trying to reach that endpoint. And, and you're not going to achieve everything at once. It's about that continual pressure, adjusting, listening to everyone about what the challenges are, but get the people that it benefits to speak up, to say, we want this, and, and, and keep, uh, uh, keep moving forward, essentially, to where you ultimately want to be. Thank you. Thanks so much, Sam. Um, really informative. So great to hear from you.